Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to uh, another youth sermon. Guys, hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys have been enjoying this uh, sermon series on worldliness and hopefully it's benefited you in some way, shape, or form. Um, last week we learned about the story of the Bible to first understand the world. Today we'll consider our relationship with the world with this knowledge of the story given from the Bible. But before we go into it, let's pray and then we'll get started. Let's pray. Our Father God, thank you, Lord, for another day that you allow us to have. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to even meet like this online. May you have mercy on us, Lord, as we live our lives as students uh, in the middle of this uh, pandemic. Lord, um, we may be physically tired, mentally tired, emotionally tired, and perhaps even spiritually tired. Lord, would you refresh us um, with your presence, with your word, and Lord, would you help us and guide us as we, uh, as students, Lord, are constantly learning and constantly having projects and work to do, even during this time right now. Would you give us strength, Lord, to stay up to date and make sure that we are doing well and excellently, Lord, in all of our studies. But more than that, I pray that we do it uh, because we love you and we want to please you that we worship you through our studies. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so far we've read, um, from, or at least heard from our sermons, that I'm going against everything I said so far. Uh, th this may sound like it when I say this, but enjoy the world. Anybody might be thinking, wait, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, aren't you saying, like, don't? enjoy the world now you're saying to us enjoy the world well worldliness i say this because worldliness is not a matter of things but it's of the heart the world we're forbidden to love is not the earthly creation but the rebellious independent god rejecting mindset of those who live in this world we must not share this world's view live by its values, cherish its cravings, or pursue its goals. In this sense, we are not to love the world, setting our hearts on that which is against God. But the reality is, this world is where we live. I mean, we can't really run away from it, right? And God created it for us to take care of it and to enjoy it, this world. The name Eden as in the Garden of Eden, Eden itself means pleasure or delight. And the Bible uses the language of plenty, richness, and pleasure to describe the Garden of Eden. From the very beginning, God intended man to experience, us to experience, fellowship with him in a beautiful environment. And although the fall brought frustration and corruption to this creation, it still remains a gift from God to be acknowledged, to be appreciated, and to be enjoyed. If you turn to 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and read verses 4 to 5. 1 Timothy 4, 4 to 5 says this, For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is made holy by the word of God and prayer. Now, if creation is God's gift, we have the responsibility to study and enjoy the world around us. For example, I remember when I found out that when it snows, each snowflake, each one is different from all the others. In other words, every single snowflake, every single one, is an original. There's none other, there's, they're all different, meaning. Now, I couldn't even grasp first in my mind of that truth, but then I was reminded that snow was created by God, and it pointed me to God's creativity and also His power. So it's not about just enjoying the world, but looking to God when you're enjoying the world. And the more we learn about God's world and his works, the more cause we have to delight in God and express 
praise. Now, as we enjoy the world, we should try to engage the world. If you turn to Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 says this, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. After creating man and woman, God immediately gives them a command. Mankind has been given the privilege to fill and take care of the world on God's behalf. We see a little of what God meant by this in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. It says this, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. To work it and keep it. Now humans were responsible to work and to keep it, and it wasn't just farming. Um, it meant family, science, economy, technology, education, government, art, everything. We were supposed to work it and keep it, take care of it. Now, even though sin made this far more difficult to do, it didn't mean that the original command by God was now completely gone. Now, what would this mean for you in your life? Well, have you ever wondered if your schoolwork was something that God cares about? Because he does. Have you ever wondered if you washing dishes, doing laundry, throwing out the trash, cleaning up your room, or any other chores that you do at home were things that God cares about? Because he does. Have you ever wondered if you obeying or disobeying your parents, treating your siblings harshly, hanging out with questionable people, going to questionable places, doing sinful acts in your life were things that God cares about? Well, because he does. A biblical worldview, meaning you look at the world through the lens of the Bible, gives us new eyes to see all of life. Not just segments or sections in our life. All of life. Every part of our lives had potential to obey or disobey God. Every activity provides an opportunity to obey or disobey God. And here's the thing. All things matter to God. Everything. Everything in your life matters to God. Because God is over all of those things in your life. Right now, you guys are all middle school and high school students. I mean, middle school or high school students because you can't be a middle school and a high school student, right? Um, which means that you will be learning. Yeah, that's what you do as students. You learn. Education is a means to glorify God. I'm not sure if you ever saw it that way before. There's a way for you to glorify God. In most cases, it will help you prepare for future, uh, future jobs, your education. But more importantly, it's a way to love God with all your mind. With your mind. Have you ever thought about that? Loving God with all your mind. It helps you to think and maybe even enter in a conversation about what's going on in the culture today. It prepares you to serve others by developing your mind, your gifts, your interests, when opportunities do come in your life. Now the story of the Bible insists that God's rule, his kingdom, extends to every part of creation, to every part of our lives. I want to ask you, do you have this awareness that God's rule, his kingdom, extends to all part of our lives, every part of our lives? Every breath, every moment lived for God. Think about it in your own life. All of life brings one long opportunity to experience God in your life, to serve God in your life, to be used by God in your life. As we receive from God our gifts, callings, uh, opportunities, and the power to use them for God's glory. And I pray that this will be true in my life, in your life, in our lives together. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for reminding us once again for us to 
really looking in our lives and to be aware that God, everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we perhaps even think, Lord, all matters. Because Lord, you know all things, you see all things, you hear all things. And Lord, I pray that we as students, middle school or high school, may we look at our lives and may we see, Lord Father God, that you are king over all of creation, that you are king over us, and that you are king over all aspects of our lives. So Lord, I pray that you will change our hearts so that we will see that we don't just do this or that, thinking that, God, that you don't care about it or that it doesn't matter to you. Because, God, we are reminded that everything matters to you. All of our lives matter to you. What we do, what we say, what we, what we think, Lord, all matters to you. So, Lord, help us to see that, be aware of that, and to live our lives accordingly with that truth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray all these things. Amen.